Hello and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. My name is Pandi Chandra. I am an Indian classical dancer. The dance form I have learnt and nurtured is Kathak. Now the word Kathak means story. A person who tells a story is a Kathak and the dance form is also Kathak. So when you merge the two, the person and the stylized way of talking, it becomes close to what we understand as communication. But Kathak has its own story as well. It started in, the ancient, in northern India, in the ancient days, when these bands of people, musicians and dancers, get together and they would be talking about the nature or say about a king's kingdom judgment policy or the spy system or the irrigation system, whatever they saw, they would dance it out, mime it out from one kingdom to another kingdom and carry this legacy as information and as entertainment. So on and so forth, it just went on. The legacy of dance carried on all the way to modern day auditoriums. Now today we have themes on environment, pollution, recipes, rasa theories, science and dance, the physics of dance, the philosophy of dance, all this is being danced as productions. So there are many such topics that are current and contemporary that can be interpreted and communicated to our audiences through Kathak. But my legacy and my forte has been in bringing this traditional classical dance form from the books onto online. And I'm known as an online guru because for the past 30 years, all I've done is collected information and data to translate dance movement vocabulary into teaching people online. Now this journey started almost 30 years back. I was born and raised, I'm 55 now, so it's not that I'm 55 years born when I was born and raised in Lucknow, the seat of Kathak. I was taught the content, I was educated in Kathak with the language Urdu and Hindi. My first stop was England. To be honest, it wasn't difficult to translate my dance form to my new audiences because the language there was English and we, from the Indian subcontinent, English is almost our second language. I then moved to um, Germany and England and uh, Switzerland. Here there was a bigger problem. The language they spoke was High German or Swiss German and perhaps their second language was French or Italian or Spanish. So I said, let me explore flamenco. And the swishing of the skirt that you saw in the presentation today, we saw those similarities. The clapping and tapping from flamenco, we merged. So what I'm trying to say is the minute we are talking about bringing in similarities, it becomes easier to break boundaries. For example, we see two pictures here. There's a ballet dancer, the smaller one, and the movement she's doing is this. Say if this is a ballerina and this is a Kathak dancer, all I did is raise it there to match this to this. So then there's another Kathak dancer who's doing this. And in ballet you have this and in Kathak you have this. So there are many movements that are similar. But that doesn't mean that just because we are similar we are so together. No, there are differences too. A ballet dancer is on her toes throughout. And we Kathak dancers, heels together, toes apart. So we are shifting our body weight in a different way and the way we carry ourselves and cover this space, which is the stage, is different. So there's no need to just merge into something else just because it suits them. It's just communication and collaboration with various other people that you bring people together. My greatest learning from all these moving around from one continent to another and spreading my art form was that dance can be used as a physical language and you don't necessarily need to the spoken or the verbal language. My biggest learning although was when I was working with community people. People teach you a lot more than what books do, that's my belief. I was taking a workshop with some girls who are visiting 
visually impaired. And I was, I was teaching them a bhajan. And the bhajan was on Lord Rama. How beautiful his eyes are, his, his magnificent blue body. And they related to everything. The technique I used was, I wore bangles in my hands. In one hand, I wore metallic bangles, so the sound was different. And the other one, I wore glass ones. Again, the sound was different. Or, and then I physically made the mudras because I was there. It was not online, it was offline. So it was easy for me to mold them according to the mudras. Language was not the same, unfortunately. But someone who could not understand my language and couldn't see me, I had to devise more means of communication with this group of people. After the bhajan was over, the whole training was over, one of the students asked me, Ma'am, you say it, his beautiful eyes and hands, and you said he has a blue body, but what is blue? What is blue? Blue is the sky, the color of your sari, but someone who's not seen your sari or the sky, and how do I explain this? How do I convey my message? I went back to what I was taught in the Natya Shastra and Abhinaya Darban, the Rasa theory, the Bhava theory. How there we were taught how to emote. So I told this little girl, supposing there's fresh breeze and you're missing someone. Don't you feel a little blue? Maybe that feeling is, or when you're very angry, maybe that's fire and that's red. Or you're very peaceful, maybe that's white. Or you inhale a flower and you feel romantic, that is Shringar Rasa, so on and so forth. So you need to find similes and differences, celebrate the differences, bring in the similes and narrate your stories in whichever way possible so that you can then connect with your person who you're speaking to. Now all of this, did I went there prepared to sh give them a workshop, I got much more, much more. All of this didn't happen just like that. Over the 30 years, I wanted to keep in touch with all the people I had met so far. And to do that, I started making those big black videos. And the cameras were big and bulky at that time, and the lights were so loud and hard that they used to actually dehydrate us. There were times when we had to stop shooting and wait till everything cooled down. Of course, now cameras have changed, they are moving, the lights are on remote system and things like that. But that process was beautiful. I used to post these videos to stay connected with my Rasiks or my people I had associated with. Straight after, after this, I translated my movement vocabulary onto CDs and DVDs. You remember renting DVDs to see your own um, favorite film? Well, I had a DVD that was on Learn Katha as well. And I put them in the airports because there's a lot of movement at the airport. I remember one incident, now whether it's working or not, I remember an incident. I was sitting at the airport and I was drowsy and I went to sleep and my neck was a bit tilted. A gentleman came to me and he said, ma'am, would you adjust your neck, please? I was pleasantly su surprised. I was like, Okay, yes, I would. And he told me that you, on your DVD, you put lessons on alignment of the neck and how should you sleep. Even while you're asleep, make sure that your alignment is right. So I knew that the DVDs were working. They were going to the right people. Now, this was all pre-programmed lessons. I also wanted to go online live. I don't know how many of you, I don't know if you're old enough. Do you remember dial-up internet? So we used to send information through that. Dial-up internet was there. And then Skype came 2003. We had issues about depth, left and right issue, lag with the sound and the glitching of the Wi-Fi. And th things moved on, but this is where I was making my notes of how I'm going to answer all the questions that have not been asked as yet. How am I going to explain dance online? It was a beautiful journey so far. The essence of all this is that no matter where we go and whatever we do, we need to find similarities and differences. 
One another incident, when I sent some DVDs to, I wanted to put all this on YouTube, which is what everybody does. I wanted to put all my dance onto YouTube. But before I did that, I had to be clear with what, how am I going to actually do this? I followed a three-step policy of mine, a project of mine, a plan of action. What is my vision? What do I want? How am I going to get that? The method behind it, my method. All the notes I had taken, I had to put them into a strategic fashion. And then the third, which is clarity, detail analysis of how I'm going to make this happen. So if this, is, however big the vision may be, but when you're actually doing something, these three steps really helped me. I'd just like to try something. Say I was to teach you dance while you're sitting there. And I say that this is zero degrees and this is 90. And say, put your hand 45 degrees. Where would you put it? Put your right hand 45 degrees. Thank you. 45 degrees ahead in the front and back. Okay, we got it. Now if I was to say, if this was your position of holding it there, I want you to connect your chin to the wrist and keep looking in that direction. And wherever the hand goes, the chin goes with it. The movement vocabulary is changed because now, so wherever your eyes are, your hands are going. Yato hasta tato drishti. Wherever your hands are, the eyes go. Yato drishti tato manha is where your mind is. Your focus is there. Yato manha tato bhava is where the emotions are there. And the minute you have the emotions, rasa is formed. So yato hasta tato drishti. Yato drishti tato manha. Yato manha tato bhava. Yato bhava tato rasa. Rasa is created with your rasik, the person who is in front of you. So that was the basic formula that was passed on from generations. So there was nothing new. It was all there in the books. The medium of communication is what is important and how quickly you build those bridges into another culture to see how your culture then flourishes with them. Compatibility, reciprocity, give and take, that is what matters. As I said, I wanted to put everything online and free for all. Why? Simply because one, accessibility, very important. People should have access to it. I met another gentleman who said to me that he lives in a village where men are not, um, it's not okay for, they're not, they're not encouraged to do classical dance. Therefore, he can't go to an institute. But every Wednesday when I put on a free lesson for him, he goes and closes all the doors and windows and he dances his heart out and he can internalize it and he's a much happier person. And with this happiness, he goes and relates to and shares it with his children, his wife and everybody around. The fact that an online lesson in his village is benefiting him made me feel really good. So I knew that it is accessible. The other thing is spreading it. So if I was to dance for you today, and I was to dance to you for you another next year, I want you as an audience to be more educated about what I did today so that you can come back with more challenges. And you can say, you know what, can you do something even better? And you're a more educated audience. So for me, I grow, you grow, and together our vocabulary and our conversation is more dense. And we're all happier because we're all going with the art form. Another incident. On my bucket list was zip lining. And uh, I was um, trying to do that, but I was really scared. In Alaska, as I was standing there, ready to jump in, a teenager, an Alaskan teenager, says to me, Mr. Chandra, you can do it. And I'm, how do you? Why, how do you? If you can do all the tukra, tihais, parans, and chakras, you can do this. An Alaskan teenager boy saying this to me, I said, how do you, I am using those techniques to make my own dance for my college. So there I see that, okay, now people way out of my um, way home or my nationality or my culture are being able to use this. Another reason, people who want to learn the art form are not so aware of what Kathak is. How many of us actually know 
Tirvat, Parans, Chaturangs, Dhrupad Dhamar, all these are specialized pieces of the repertoire. So when someone is coming to learn, they are unaware. In fact, advanced level students come to learn from me and they never ask me what my qualification, can I teach them, what's my qualification, they won't ask me. But if they, at the same time the mother is taking her daughter to learn in a nursery, we we'll find out what is a nursery, is she, is she well trained, does she know what she's doing. So dancers in education was suffering, because not because they don't want to ask me the question, it's because they didn't know what to ask. So unless I outline the syllabus and what all is there in my art form, how are they going to come up with that challenge or that knowledge? Another reason, I learned with the Guru Shishya Parampara. Guru Shishya Parampara is where this is the Guru, this is the Shishya, and we surrender to the Guru. And the Guru says, this is how you're supposed to do it, we do it. The next day, Guru says, do it like that, we do it move like that, so on and so forth. But there is no reciprocity there. There is not much of communication. There's not much, in the classical dance form, we don't normally ask questions, which is a big drawback, because if you don't ask questions, okay, maybe there are certain things you need to follow, but how about the Guru growing with you as well? Unless the Guru knows what you want, where you want, how you want, you can't do that. So these are some of the incidences that happened in my life that made me feel that online is necessary and I wanted to share this with them. I shared my tools with my community to empower my coming generation and future generation with tools that they could use to make their own programs. I tried to archive the work that the, that the bands of people did ages back, documented it and put it together so that those who are interested in the art form will show the interest to connect with it and take it to many countries. Because doing classical dance in just one arena and one space is beautiful, no doubt, but taking it to other places and sharing your art form with other people and growing with them is the essence of life. So it's high time we as dancers start thinking of dance a bit differently we push our borders so that new ideas can come in. We may fall, that's okay, but we'll rise and shine again, we'll try again. And with this confidence and almost educated knowledge that one has, you can then move forward and face any crisis that may hit you. So thank you very much for listening to my journey.